What's going on guys, Set42 here, and this is the last video of the day. I've uploaded three videos uh, in the meantime, so if you want to go check out those videos as well, all the links in the description will be in um, the bottom of this video. So yeah, today I'm going to be talking about the UCLA Bruins versus the Utah Utes, and uh, this is going to be another interesting matchup in my opinion. Uh, I don't know what the coverage will be on because it's a Pac-12 they're probably going to be on most likely on the Pac-12 network. So I don't know if it'll, it'll be on either ESPN or other other networks as well. But this game is going to be interesting because both teams are actually pretty good. UCLA Bruins are actually really good this year. The 3-0. Utah is 3-0. Both teams are ranked. UCLA is 24th. Uh, Utah is ranked 12th. Uh, time will be on 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. And, of course, this game will be played at the Reese uh, Eclipse Stadium. I don't know how to pronounce that uh, second word. Uh, but yeah, it'll be at Utah's uh, stadium, and the time of coverage will be on September, September 23rd, 2023, 3:30 uh, p.m. Eastern time, and the game time weather will be 61, which is pretty good. Um, of course, all right. So uh, Utah is without their starting uh, quarterback, which is uh, Cam Rising, so I think he's still hurt, and they're playing with a freshman. And of course, UCLA is also playing with a freshman as well, so that is pretty incredible for both teams to have freshman quarterbacks to go 3-0 right now, which is pretty impressive, in my opinion, uh, for both teams. And, of course, uh, the recent games for um, UCLA and Utah, we have um, they beat pretty good South uh, San Diego State for UCLA, uh, Coastal Carolina, which is kind of weird. They played two uh, East Coast teams, and, of course, South, uh, South Dakota or San Diego, San Diego State, my bad. Um, sorry about that. And, of course, Utah beat Baylor. They beat Florida. So that's pretty good It's without Cam Rising. So that has been huge for Utah. I know they struggled a little bit against Baylor. They were down 13-0 at, or 13-3 at one point. And, of course, Utah came back. And uh, they, won, they won that game, which is pretty impressive. They beat Florida. And I think Florida now, if they played again, I think maybe Florida would have beaten um, Utah. But, anyways, that's just my opinion. So let's go ahead and go through the matchup predictor. We have uh, UCLA or we have Utah. With a 65.4% over UCLA's 34.6. Uh, that is the match predictor. And of course, the season leaders. Oops. We have the season leaders. Um, let me zoom in on that a little bit. Um, what is his name? What is the guy name? Oh, Stur Sturvian? Stur Sturdivan? Yeah. Wait. Um, all right. So, the uh, season leaders. I'm going to go through the team stats as well. And then we'll finish up with my prediction at the end. We have uh, Dante Moore with 32 uh, completions to 51 attempts, uh, 615 passing yards, seven touchdowns as well with one interception. So he's done an excellent job so far with the UCLA. Utah, who's a freshman quarterback, uh, Nate Johnson, I believe that's his name, uh, 22 completions to 32 attempts, 281 passing yards and one touchdown. Still pretty good for a freshman QB to come in and fill in, filling in for Cam Rising. That's a big uh, statement for uh, Johnson for Utah because they're 3-0 right now and they beat um, they beat Baylor and they beat uh, Florida who are both non-power five schools so that's pretty good uh, for rushing for rushing yards we have Steel for UCLA 30 carries for 243 rushing yards and two touchdowns pretty good for him we have Jackson for Utah 33 carries 213 rushing yards and zero touchdowns we have Michael Sturdivant for UCLA he's done a great job. With nine receptions, 219 yards, and two touchdowns. Pretty good or pretty impressive in my opinion. We have Parks for Utah with eight receptions, 138 yards, and two touchdowns for uh, for Utah. All right, so for team stats, we have a total yards for UCLA, 527.0 compared to Utah, 357.0. Yards passing, we have 256.7 compared to Utah's 170.3. We have yards rushing, uh, 270.3 to 186.7. We have yards allowed. We have a 278.7 compared to Utah's 270.7 on defense yards allowed. So, wow, both both teams actually have pretty good defenses, in my opinion. Um, yards allowed. We are yeah, passing yards allowed. My bad. We have all, UCLA's only allowed 209.0 yards allowed. Utah 205.7. Yard passing yards allowed, and of course, lastly, from the team stats, we have rushing rushing or rushing yards allowed on defense. We have UCLA's 69.7 compared to Utah's 65.0. All right, so I think this will probably be UCLA's first actual test against an actual 
conference opponent. And of course, uh, this will be Dante Moore's real test against an actual pretty good defense, in my opinion, as from the stats. And of course, Utah did beat two non-Power 5 schools, which is Baylor and of course Florida. And so, um, I mean, UCLA hasn't really played anybody significantly good, in my opinion. They played like two, like let's say they played... Yeah, they played three G5 schools. But I'm not discrediting UCLA because they, they can be really good. I like Chip Kelly as a head coach. But I think that since it's at home with Utah, I think that Utah is going to win by maybe minus three points. I think it may be a high-scoring game. It could be a low-scoring game because their defenses are pretty good from the stats. But I think that Utah, even though they don't have that many, uh, as much as like total yards on offense, but compared to their defense, I think that Utah will win by minus three points. It's probably going to be a high-scoring game. Uh, I think it might go down to the wire as well. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think. If you're a Utah fan, comment down below. If you're a UCLA fan, comment down below. And, uh, yeah, uh, that's all I have for today. And uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe. More college football videos will be on the way. Seth Warriors here. Y'all have a great day. See you guys next time. Peace.